Hello, this is Karen Swanberg of Halloween's Gardens. I wanted to demonstrate how I have been doing the foam for my deep water culture aquaponics trough. It's not the most efficient way ever invented, but it seems to be doing the job just fine. First of all, I have a template, a template that I made this OSB, and then I have screws that I just stuck in and, and, and then screwed down. It's on a six inch, six inch hexagonal pattern. I'm taking my foam, which is two inches thick by four feet by eight feet, and I line it up here, and I'm punching holes to make pilot holes for my hole saw. You may or may not be able to see this, but there are now holes here, which I can see well enough in most cases to then use my hole saw on. I'm using in this case one and seven eighths inch hole saw because I'm using two inch net pot. So I have the holes I made, so I just drill in. pilot bit through here when it's spinning through sort of persistence of this vision. So that's how I can go so fast. Fast of course is your relative term. Then once you have all your holes done, since this is two inches thick, it just barely punch punched holes on this side. So then you can come back through with those holes. And you punch it through. Sometimes you get the core out, sometimes it stays in, and you can just punch it through. It depends. I haven't figured out how to get it to stay in there, so I can just punch it through. I'm working on it. Anyway, then once I have them all punched through, I then go over there and I paint them with two layers of exterior latex white paint and I'm doing it at the very end as opposed to at the beginning because so far that seems to be the way it works the best. I tried it with a paint sprayer and that kept on clogging and plus if you paint everything before this is what the foam looks like when you get it. Most people use the blue foam from Dow I wasn't able to find that in a non-scoreboard form, so I'm using just this, which is also another uh, extruded polystyrene. It's from a local company. But if you paint it first, then try to drill the holes, you get all sorts of weird paint flakes coming off the edge, and in, in some cases I've actually seen it peel off, and you get weird things on the edge. And so I'm painting at the end. That will save me paint. However, it's going to take me years in order to get it done. So anyway, that's a brief overview of how I do my deep water culture troughs. Thank you very much. You may have wondered why I'm doing this over my grow bed, which is this 100-gallon one, stock tank. It's because I'm using deep water troughs, as I mentioned, and since I'm doing this in a cold weather climate, I'm going to insulate those. Most of it I'm going to insulate with insulation pretty similar to what I'm making my troughs out of, but there are plenty of sections where that just won't fit very well. So I'm actually going to use these to insulate. Why not? This stuff is expensive. 
The other thing I wanted to point out, one of the main drawbacks of using a hole saw is that the damn cords get stuck. So, very important tool. Try to buy a hole saw that has a fair window on this side. Because then you can shove things out. A few more tips. When working with foam, always, always, always have a whisk broom. The foam gets everywhere. So you have to continually whisk it to keep it clean. Tip number two. If you've already punched your holes before painting things, you can pick up the new troughs by, by the holes and carry it away to take it to the drying rack.